Hello, everyone. This is a meeting of Chapter 20, and we have tonight for you a very special presentation from Jennifer Filzen, Rockstar Marketing, who truly is a rock star, at least in my mind. She handles my marketing for Facebook and all the <clears throat> all the channels for DNH Enterprises. She also handles Facebook and all the channels for my Rotary and for my CARS Second Chance donation program. So tonight, Jennifer is going to talk to us about five easy steps using social media to convert qualified clients. You go, Jen. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And we're going to have so much fun. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. What I want to do is I want to provide you content that is going to be so great that you can use it immediately. So you don't have to just marinate on things after watching this. You can actually take some stuff with you right away and implement it. So how's that for some value and for some action, right? Yay. Cool. So it's going to be the Mary and Jen show because... <laughs> It is, it is inauguration day and there's a lot going on. I'm sure everyone's glued to their televisions right now, but we are gonna start off 2021 strong because I wanna show you the five easy steps using social media to convert qualified clients. Now, I'm not sharing screens, we're just gonna talk, us, okay? So here's the deal. There are three types of social media strategy. There's the short-term strategy, the mid-term strategy, and the long-term strategy. So my question to you is, which one do you use most of the time? So let's discuss those three. The short-term strategy is day-to-day -day tasks, putting out fires. I'm sure we as business owners, we know what that's all about, right? Putting out fires on a constant basis. That is short-term strategy, and it can be exhausting at times. Then there's the mid-term strategy. I tend to live here the most. That is when you have your weekly, monthly, quarterly goals. And when you're doing that, you're winning battles. You're not just fighting fires, you're winning battles. And then some of us are lucky enough to live in the long-term strategy space. I confess I should live there more, mm -hmm. but that is looking at semi-annually, yearly, and even, may I dare say, the 10-year approach where you can see your exit strategy, you know where you're gonna go. This long-term strategy is when you're winning wars, right? So we've got firefighting, winning battles, and winning wars. Those are the three strategies in social media marketing, and that is what I want to address today. So if we look at short-term, let's look at step one in getting your clients to convert. The step one is to plan out your social media engagement strategy. So what you want to do is you want to make sure on a daily basis that your social media channels are fed, that you are putting out information about your company, something entertaining, something engaging, something educational, and then earn the right to send them to your website. And then not only are you putting information out there on the social media channels, you also want to interact with people. You wanna to respond to everyone who comments on your posts, and you wanna like and comment on the posts of others that you are following, because why? Well, social media is meant to be social. And if you really want to step up your game and get more people to like your personal page and like your business page and see more of what it is that you're doing as a business, make sure that you engage with at least five new people every day so you can expand your network. And I'll tell you something, because Mary here is my, my partner in crime, my accomplice, we do that for Cars Second Chance, the Rotary Club, and DNH Enterprises. We'll post something funny, people will laugh, they'll look at it, we'll do a little likes, you know, people will ask questions, we'll engage. Why? Because social is meant to be social. And if you're not engaging, then they're gonna say, well, are they legit? Are they real? Or is this a robot that's, that's doing it, right? Okay, so that is step number one, plan your social media engagement strategy. Step number two is to plan your social media posts in three-month batches. 
this is that midterm strategy that I was talking about. If you do everything in, in, in three month batches, that is gonna take a lot of chaos away from your marketing. And, and it's funny, Mary, um, I know that we're all like at home, but like, have you had more of these moments where you're wanting to rip your hair out? <laughs> When the yes. privacy of your like ah, right, right, right. If you I like do to say, yeah. I like to say that I'm on a hair trigger. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. So so what I'm trying to do is keep everyone's hair in their head. Like because when we're when we're dealing with marketing, sometimes we're just like, gah. And so the whole point of today's lesson is to give you a plan to remove that hair triggering ah angst that we feel because we've already got enough going on right running our businesses we're dealing with the financials we're dealing with our employees showing up not showing up doing a good job not doing a good job uh doing great customer service not doing great customer service and everything in between right so this is the last of our pain points right and how many of you guys i know we're virtual but how many of you guys are pained just pained when having to deal with marketing <laughs> i get it i get it this is my fun place that's why you should send it to me right but Hard. the deal is that for for like for example with car second chance with dnh enterprises and all of the other clients that we work with we put it in batches what does that mean jen well for car second chance for example we're in january right now i already have the social media posts planned from all the way from January all the way up to the beginning of April. Why do mm -hmm. I do that? Because if I am trying to schedule posts on a daily basis for 60 plus clients of ours, can you say bald spot? <laughs> <laughs> so what I do is I create a batch and, and I'll show you in a moment how I create that batch. But really I plan ahead. It's like, you know, cooking your meals ahead of time. That way you've always got a lunch, right? Right? And so that batching is, is so important. So let me talk about that a little bit. Okay, when we're doing batching, what we're doing is we're engaging the three E's and then we send them to the website. So really briefly, what we're doing is we'll find something educational. I'm gonna use a car second chance, Mary, because car second chance is so cool, right? Um, educational did you know this about donating vehicles and did you know let's educate you on how a donated vehicle can benefit your community can benefit uh, people who are less um uh what's the word um they don't they have fewer advantages right and so how can uh, you can do this. Teaching them how to donate a car is educational. All that kind of stuff. There's so many different things about education. Also, too, about education is, okay, how do I take this dead car and make it into something that can donate money to the food bank or to help get rid of polio? Well, the education is, is that we take this donated car, we run it through DNH Enterprises, they fix it up, and then it gets sold for profit to benefit the charity at hand. So that is a form of educational posts, right? It can be of any topic, just something that helps them learn. The next E is entertaining. Make them laugh, make them enjoy themselves. Car commercials are funny. Like, okay, for example, if you are, if you are a shop that uh, deals with strictly German automobiles, so Volkswagen, Audi, BMW, Mercedes, yeah? So we can find all kinds of hilarious commercials. I mean, I'm sure you've seen like the Mercedes commercial with the kitty cat on the on the Mercedes and the wind is blowing the kitty cat and it just kind of slides all over the Mercedes. Have you seen that one? That's uh -huh. fun. Yeah, it's, it's even got the song meow, meow. I mean, it's just hilarious, right? And the, or the chickens, you know, the, chi the chicken's head is stable, but they're moving to stay in a lot. Dana la ah ah and the chicken's head is still like right there right and they're like and this is the this is the um what is the term uh, the stability whatever that we've got going on in the Mercedes I mean there are some hilarious commercials right there's a there's a little commercial about a little old lady who sells her VW and like this young son and his daddy are like buying this and he, and the dad's like, ooh, this is an old lady's car. This is a sweet little ride. I'll bet you it's been babies. Meanwhile, you have flashbacks in the lady's head and it's when she's like ripping around the corner doing autocross <laughs> and like racing people at the stoplight and she's all hee hee hee. So 
find commercials about the vehicles that you service because they're funny. I mean, Super Bowl yeah. commercials are a great start, right? Okay, yeah. so that's so we did we did educational, we did entertaining. Then there's engaging. Engaging can be so cool. It can kind of be a blurred line between uh, in, educational and entertaining, but engaging is like asking people a question. Hey, what was your favorite car when you were growing up? Or what was your first car like? Or hey, are you into RVing? You know, what are some of the things that you guys like? If, when you engage people and you start them in conversation, or even if you get like a funny meme and you're like, "Is this relatable?" <laughs> like, then people are like, "Oh yeah," and then there's a conversation going on. So we try to do the three E's: engaging, entertaining, educational. And then after we've started that conversation, then we've earned the right to send them to your website, right? So when you think about it. You come up with uh, two posts per week, okay? Come up with something entertaining, first post. Come up with something engaging, second post. Come up with something uh, educational, next one. And then send them to your website. So in two weeks, you've created four posts, you've covered the three E's, plus send them to your website, and then you rinse and repeat. The next week, do something different. You know what I mean? So, so much out there. If you don't know what to do, that's okay. Call me. I'll be happy to walk you through it. So far, so good, Mary. You good? You clear on what we're what we're doing? Uh, Jen, are you uh, basically talking about Facebook here or Facebook, Instagram? Ah, great point. All of the above. All of and, the above. Get well, on as many channels doing, as possible. Yeah. I don't know what you do with my Google page for DNH. But I am constantly, every month I get, you have XXX people's, it just grows. So many people viewing it. I love that. I love getting those, those emails, <laughs> those posts. I'm so glad. Well, actually, we've implemented a brand new secret weapon with Google My Business. Really? I discovered, yes, we are now, and I never made an announcement of this because it's actually been a grand experiment, but you have given me great news that it's working. I went ahead and I invested in a software application that would allow me to schedule the same posts that I put on Facebook and Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. I can also put them on Google My Business. I had to pay a little extra. I'm I'm experimenting with it, but the fact that you are receiving emails saying that it's working makes my heart happy because well, it's good SEO. It's really what it is. And as your client, I feel really confident in your services seeing this stuff. It's great. <laughs> I did not pay her to say this, folks. This is completely unscripted, but I'm so glad that she has good news for me rather than Jen, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's another here's another tactic this is um i would even dare say is this yeah okay this is still part of the batching and the whole idea it's okay it's like jen i have no idea what engaging post what educational post like help me here all right i know you guys can't really see this but i'm just showing a spreadsheet of what rockstar marketing has as far as our annual plan so i'm going to read this out to you and i will be happy to share a copy electronically um, but let me just read this thing out in fact take notes folks take notes if you are uh, wanting to do so because mary um we already kind of do this for you sort of but if you really want to take it to the next level i encourage you to do this as well I figured out that when I plan ahead of time, not only does it remove my chaos, it also primes the pump for better creativity, better promotional skills, and better results for my beautiful clients like Mary and others, okay? So one of the things that we do at Rockstar Marketing is we go ahead and we plan out 12 months worth of blogs and say, Mary, here are the 12 months worth of blogs we're thinking of. What do you think? And what's great is it starts the conversation. She is way too busy to, hey, Matt Peter Patterson's coming on. This is great. Mary is a super busy shop owner. She's got so many things going on. The last thing she wants to do is figure out what blogs that, that she wants to write or have us write. So I, my team and I, we come up with the blog topics, but we say, Mary, this is what we're thinking of. Does this fit with your plan? 
And then she's like, well, you know, we've got this going on in this month and this going on in this month. And so we'll, we'll, we'll uh, negotiate what those blog topics should be based off of what her plan is. But here's what I'm going to teach you guys to do right now. Okay. I want you to create a, 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 grab a piece of paper. And at the top, I want you to write the following. The month. So we're in January or February or March, whatever. Write down all the months, January, February, all the way for the full year. And if you want to get really fancy, write the quarter that you're in. So Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Then the next thing that you're going to write is goals. What are your goals for each month, for each quarter? If you're working with a coach like Bill Haas, I'm sure that your coach has you planning out, okay, what do I want to accomplish this year? I want to reach these numbers. Here's how I'm going to do it, right? So you've got to know what it is that your goals are. And then um, the next thing on your list after goals, so we've got month, quarter goals. The next one is events. Are you hosting any events, whether it be online or in person? Now, I recognize we're in COVID. A lot of us have not been able to do our annual customer, customer appreciation barbecue. We haven't been able to do the fundraising for the animal shelter that we usually do. Hey, Matt, welcome. We haven't done all the things in person that we're accustomed to, but perhaps, perhaps my darling, you want to do a car clinic, but you want to do it virtually so you can hit a bigger audience. You no longer have to do car clinics in your shop. You can do it online. And you might just find that not only are the kids that are going to the college whose cars you're servicing, but their parents over in a different state are watching you as well. Even happier that you're offering this car care clinic because they know that their child going to school is in good hands. Now, granted, I don't know how many kids are going to college anymore. They're probably at home. But the, you know what I'm saying? When when you're someone you love is in a new city and they don't have their normal mechanic, they get scared, right? And they want to make sure that they can trust the person servicing the vehicle. So what events are you doing? And then the next column, themes. What is the theme for the month? Okay. So January, how about fresh start, right? February, maybe the theme is Valentine's Day, showing people love. Maybe maybe uh, March, it's spring forward. Maybe April is clarity. And then, and then um, the next column, hey there, Matt, welcome. Then the next column is videos to create. Are you, are you going to do video marketing? Because that is hot right now. And creating videos each month for your shop or what it is that you're doing in the world, brilliant. Here are some ideas, videos to create. How to jumpstart a car, how to change a tire, how to check your fluids, right? And then um, the post to create is the next column, and then the emails to create. So that's a lot, but let me let me just boil this down. And again, I'm happy to share this in digital format for you so you can see what Rockstar Marketing is doing. But let me give you an example of what it is that we're doing in January. So you can see how this all flows together. All right, the month of January, Q1. Well, the goal is to plan my 2021 goals. And so the event that I'm doing is a webinar that I did last weekend on the 16th of January, and it was vision boards. I had everyone gather around me. We all were like kids in elementary school in the arts and crafts day, and we're like playing with our poster board and we've got our glue sticks and tape and scissors and magazines and we're cutting out the pictures that we want to do. One of the people doing the vision board workshop with us did it all digitally. There, there was no tape there, but they just did like on a on their on their uh, computer, which I thought was brilliant. But that was our event for the for the month. The theme for January is a fresh start. And then the videos that I need to create is the, the replays from that workshop. So we have the vision board workshop. I created the replay video, and that's the video that I did. And then the post that we're creating is how to visualize goals and the emails that we created, also known as the blog. So it can be one or the other. You can do a separate email or you can do blogs and, and write your blog and then send that out in an email. But the point is, is that January is all about living the dream, you know, figuring out how to, where do I want to be, where do I want to go. February, the theme or the goal is 
show love to everyone. The event is a virtual summit that we're going to be doing. The theme is love. The video I'll be creating will be a summit replay. And then post to create. Show how much we love them. And then the emails to create is continue virtual summit emails. So that's what Rockstar Marketing is doing. But now that I have Matt and I have Mary, and Matt, welcome. Welcome. This is a very interactive group. Yes. So for example, let's just get our calendar and let's have a brainstorm of what it is that we might promote for our businesses and what we're doing by the different months. Okay. So whoever's watching, grab a pen, grab your paper and grab your calendar, because as we are discussing this, perhaps you might come up with ideas for yourself as to what you want to do. Okay. So if you had to write a blog for January, Matt, what would be a really great topic to, to write about? I'm sorry, Jennifer. I'm on two meetings at the same time. So I have no myself muted. I'm on a school meeting as well. So uh -huh. I'm trying to do two things. Yeah. Sorry. I'm really going to listen very well, though. Yeah. Sorry. No I can't, no I'm not going to be exactly. able to get involved here too much. No worries, love. Thank you so much for being honest. No I appreciate your multitasking. No and you know what? I get it. I get it. You know what, Mary? He's not alone. I'm in so many meetings now. It's crazy, right? Yeah. I'm sure you are too. Anyway. Okay, so Mary, for January, what would be a smart blog topic to discuss for the month of January, considering it's pretty mild here in California? <laughs> I would probably uh, want to uh, blog about failed New Year's resolutions. <laughs> right? well, my New Year's resolutions and how quickly they went down the toilet. <laughs> right? And then another thought is you could write about New Year's resolutions for your car. If your car could talk, what New Year's resolutions would it come up with? Well, I promise, I promise I'll get my, my oil changed on a regular basis. I promise that I'll get my tires checked on a regular basis. If my own tires will help me out. <laughs> How about the oil? I mean, please, can you just check my oil once please in a while? Check my oil. Please check my oil. Right? And, and then that, that check engine light that's been on for months now, could you just maybe get it diagnosed? <laughs> maybe. And you know what? That That's okay. Perfect. So for February, how to show love for your car, get that check engine light figured out. There is a way to show love for your car, right? Right. That would be great for February. How to show love to your car. Exactly, exactly. And then March, let's see, all kinds of things are happening in March. We've got spring starting. We've got uh, we've got uh, the change of weather, maybe like, um, oh, pollen. Pollen might be something that starts happening. Or maybe people are just doing their last bits of trying to get the skiing season in for the year. So, you know, who knows what March holds? Because like, if anything, COVID taught us not to make any plans for the for any month coming up but, but for those who want to travel in march you know we may get to go to a restaurant again who knows yeah you we know? might go on road trips again exactly <laughs> okay april april how about how about changing the cabin filter because the pollen is really thick in april and so maybe we want to make sure that we can breathe easily maybe some clarity that way we're not taking too many meds, um, you know, to, to deal with our allergies, right? Right? And then, and go ahead. The meds that we take for other things too. Oh, right? Yeah, right. And then May, what would be a good thing for May? How about? Um, air conditioning. What? Air conditioning. Oh yeah, air conditioning would be good. Or maybe um, your college kids, are um going off now that they've graduated or their high school you know the kids are are taking new jobs or maybe they're they're traveling maybe there's something that we want to do for preventive or maybe we just want to go camping maybe it's finally summertime we want to go camping so here are some really great drives to go camping to but before you go make sure your vehicle is taken care of right preventive maintenance okay june another opportunity for air conditioning right uh, perfect opportunity to discuss tires. 
maybe the tires are getting a little bald who knows because they've the kids have been driving so hard and so fast i have no idea oops okay we've got july we've got the fourth of july oh say can you see with those windshield wipers and and uh oh say can you see through the windshield how about making sure that your visibility is good you know you could even do a thing about tail lights and headlights about uh that that headlight lens restoration because if you can't see how safe are you right and then we've got august oh back to school kids are going back to school again with the mm -hmm. pandemic we don't know what school looks like by august of 2021 but we can guess we're hoping that everything's going back to normal right so perhaps back to school season thing we want to start preparing for and then i don't know september labor day more travel not sure or just you know maybe we're commuting again who knows what september of 2021 is going to hold for us but if if, if it if it it's so funny i always have to say normal normal and paraphrasing because 2020 definitely showed us that we are not living a normal life anymore but remember when september and october and november was like a busy year busy time of year for all of us and we really started getting back to work and we were really like pushing forward and a lot of good business things happened in those months right and so maybe we'll see that continue and then october ooh, breaks for breasts right yes Yes, yes, uh, so October, the regs for breasts is something to talk about. So November. In, so what do you that's think? Oh, with, go ahead. Uh, you're going to be presenting to ASA Northwest. It's either in October or November, they have this fantastic clinic that a lot of the shops offer where they check your lights. I forget what they call it. It's a really catchy name, but that I've always wanted to do that here uh, because I think it's such a great, idea to bring the customers into your shop to do a free light check and replace bulbs yes you no know, so yeah. stuff like that it's so huge i love that and let's do that for sure because um i heard a, a great idea from chuck perry who's the general manager from pals of cal auto repair he did mm -hmm. a abcs of sales webinar for me last week and he said that they have a lifetime membership for their clients if they wish to pay for it, lifetime membership of wheel alignment. So he says, why would we give away, why would we have a membership and a lifetime fee, just one, one fee of like, I think he said it was like $149 or something like that. Why would we want to do that? Well, because we know that their alignment's probably going to be pretty decent and we can always fix it. But what it does is it allows us to check the entire vehicle and bring up issues of concern so they can maintain it and remain on the safer side of driving, right? So so yeah. when you do things like that and you're like, hey, let me give to help my community and support them and make sure that they're safer. And then you happen to be under the car and it's like, yeah, I see all these other issues. Here's my digital visual inspection showing you exactly what's going on so we can make sure that we care for you. Yeah, so brilliant. Let's do it, Mary. Let's do it. Okay, I November, like starting to do the holiday travel. Yeah, same thing with December. Maybe maybe uh, December, your blog can be um, gifts for the car aficionado, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw a really funny meme the other day, and it was like, uh, it was uh, pretty much showing um, a, a cup holder in a car. No, sorry, not a cup holder. I'm sorry, it wasn't a cup holder. It was a, um, it was a, the the sunglasses holder in the in the visor. You know, it's like, it, you know how it holds. Anyway, somebody put tacos in there. I said, look, my car comes with a taco holder. <laughs> you know, sunglass holder but it's like yeah wouldn't it be funny to have a taco holder in your car because that would make somebody very very happy right yeah. <laughs> okay keeping on by the way do you guys have any questions how did you like that blowing through the the 12 months of blogs was that helpful i yeah. wish you could show your screen i would um love for you to show either the car second chance or dnh how you how you plan it out is it's just amazing and and i love the fact that you send it to me every month and i get to weigh in on it 
and see if I like it or if I want to add anything to it. Yes, yes. And you know what? We'll when what we'll do is we will at the end we'll change the presenter and then we'll have you show it because I can we can go to your website. So so for anybody who's watching, why isn't Jen showing her screen? Well, something is going on and it won't show my screen, but I think Mary can show her screen. So we'll make we'll we'll share her screen and we'll show the Facebook page of what we've done and uh and go from there but yes you're right or or if you guys have questions and you want to you want you want me to do a show and tell directly with you that's totally cool as well okay so so step three was planning everything out right planning everything out because when you can take the chaos out of your planning you and your team know what to do next so let's talk about step four so some people tell me okay if I do all this planning, Jen, it takes away all the spontaneity. What if I come across something that's very timely and I want to drop it in? Well, here's the good news. When you do all of this planning, you are leaving room for spontaneous opportunities because you've already got everything in motion and there's nothing wrong. In fact, it's, it's a benefit when you add something new. So for example, Mary and I have had situations where she's seen me planning everything out for Car's Second Chance. She has seen me planning everything out for DNH Enterprises, and that's all set and scheduled and ready to go. But then she'll be like, oh, Jen, we hit the news, or hey, here's a car that was donated. Can you post it? Well, of course I can. So I grab what she sent me, and I put it into the posts, and it's up there, in addition to all the other stuff I already have planned. It's just an extra layer to your cake. And everyone likes cake, right? Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with having everything planned out and then throwing in a couple of spontaneous things because that's what makes it magical. And that's what gets people's attention. So yes, planning actually allows for more opportunity. And then continuing on with that, the next step, the fifth step, is to share your goals with your team. Because here's the deal. If you plan out your entire year, but you don't talk to your team about it, is your marketing really working for you? Probably not, right? So you must make sure that you communicate this with your team. Now, I'll tell you guys a very confessional, funny story that happened to me recently. So I actually came up with this thing back in September. I decided what I wanted to do from September of 2020 all the way through to February of 2022. I had my long-term strategy approach in my head, okay? I create this, I share this Google document, it's a Google spreadsheet, I share it with my team, and then I promptly put it away. And then guess what? A month goes by and I totally forgot what I wrote down. <laughs> so what I had to do, and, I, and I'm, I'm expecting as the boss, I'm expecting that I send this out to my team and they're gonna remember as well. But if I can't remember what I just did, how are they gonna do it? So guess what? I printed it out and that's why it sits on my desk and sits within range of me grabbing it because it's like, okay, February's coming up. Oh, that's right. We're gonna show love to everybody. We've got our virtual summit. The theme is love and we're gonna do the summit replays and we're gonna show them how much we love them. Okay, great. Boom, I can get started. You know what I'm saying? But if I don't notify my team, if I don't put it in front of me and know what my plan is, how is it gonna be effective? And you can't blame your marketing people for things going wrong if your team isn't acting upon your marketing strategy. <laughs> I say this with love. <laughs> okay. So everybody has some homework and let me tell you what your homework is. Okay, so everybody who's watching this call, I want you to grab your calendar and I want you to plan out your monthly, quarterly, and annual events. So we were just talking about Mary wanting to do the car clinic kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So what we wanna do is we need to put it on the calendar. Do you wanna do that in October? Do you wanna do that in May? When do you think we would have the most attendance? When do you think COVID's gonna be over and everyone's vaccinated so we can have in-person stuff? If we can't, should we plan on doing it virtually? You know, that kind of stuff. 
And then anybody who attends gets a discount off of something for something like that. Okay, whatever. But anyway, make sure that you write it all out in your calendar. You can do it in spreadsheet format. You can do it on your calendar, however you do it, but make sure that you discuss it with your team. That is step one of creating your content for the year. Step two, make sure that you create those social media posts using the three E's, something educational, something entertaining, something engaging, and then you've earned the right to their website. Plan everything out in three month batches. That way you're freaking out about it only four times per year versus every single day or 12 times a year every single month, right? If you just batch everything, set it, schedule it, ah, breathe, right? Step three, create 12 months of blog topics. We just did that for you here. If you're feeling kind of brain dead and you're not sure what to write about, rewind this class and steal what we just offered. <laughs> Step four, manage your social media posts and engage with your audience on a daily basis. Again, people want to be social, so be social. That's what social media is all about. And step five, leave room for spontaneity and impromptu opportunities to promote your business. And if anybody needs to get a hold of me, I know you can't see my screen. I'm sure Mary is going to help me make sure that uh, this replay goes out and everyone can have my contact information. But if you want to write it down right now, you can reach me on my cell phone. You can text me or call me. Cell phone is 408-833-9868. Once again, 408-833-9868. My name is Jennifer Filzen, and you can reach me at jenniferfilzen at gmail.com. And our website, is rock-star-mktg.com. Now, Jen, why does it have such a funky spelling? Well, because I'm not the only rock star marketing. I am the only bona fide Grammy qualified rock star, but there are other rock star marketing. So you want to make sure if you can't find the spelling of it, just Google Jennifer Phils in Monterey, California, rock star. I promise you, you'll find it. Or go to jenniferfilzen.com. There's a link there, as well as all my books, and my online courses and mm -hmm. the podcasts we're putting together and all that fun stuff. How to do, Mary? You did fantastic. <laughs> what is everybody about your book, though? Oh, that's right. I didn't talk about the book. So the book is a new one. I just released it right before Christmas, and it's called The Give to Get Principle. And it's so cool because we shared some of the stories of the champions within our industry. And I also talked about other industries as well, but because we've been in love with the auto repair industry for numerous years, we definitely have focused on our clients within the auto repair industry. And it was inspired many years ago by the fact that when Rockstar Marketing, when our squad sits down with a client like Mary or anybody else in the auto repair industry, we really want to get to know them. So we have a two hour long interview where we ask really open ended questions. What makes you special and unique? Who is your target demographic? What is your why? And what cities are you trying to target? So when we when we have those four basic questions, we really get a chance to have a lovely conversation about what is it that you did to start your business? Why do you continue to operate your business? And what are the higher callings that you have in your life that make you continue? Because we know as business owners, sometimes we don't want to get out of bed that day, but we have to. Because there's, <laughs> there are people that rely upon us, but there's a bigger calling, whether it be God or serving others or you just want to make sure you have a retirement or you want to retire and have more time with your grandchildren. We all have a why and that's what drives us to get out of bed every day, even when we don't want to. So when we have those conversations, we are able to capture the essence of the voice of that company and what that company's values are. And doing this for 11 years, I have fallen in love in a very sisterly way. Don't worry, I'm not a home wrecker. I'm very happily married. In a very sisterly way, I fall in love with everybody we work with because I find out what makes them tick. And I have discovered that the underlying theme 
behind all of the champions in the auto repair industry is that they are servant leaders and they're doing something to give, giving just beyond you know, a discounted oil change. They are doing something to create a memorable, indelible mark on the lives and hearts of the people that they serve. And that in turn allows them to create raving fans. We don't just want customers, we want people who love us, who will celebrate us and champion us and tell us, tell, tell all their friends about us, right? Oh, you've got to go to Mary, you've got to go to Matt, you've got to go to Jen. These people are going to do the best for you. You must go to them. These are the people that show up every single time with their vehicles for service. These are the ones that you love because they say, hey, here are my keys. Take my, my freedom. Just make sure that I'm going to be safe by the time I'm done. Okay? I'll give you my money. Just make sure that my family and I will remain safe so we can go out in the world and do what we do best. So the give to get principle is pretty much me sharing all the secret sauce of the top performing shops around the country. And it's also kind of a workbook because not only am I giving you ideas, I'm also asking you, what are the things that you are willing to give so you can make raving fans for your own business? So thank you for offering me an opportunity to talk about that, Mary. And if you guys are interested in purchasing it, you can find the Give to Get Principle on Amazon.com. And it did make bestseller list. Woo -woo. I'm super proud of that. That's hard to be a bestseller on Amazon when you consider how busy and competitive the marketing and the advertising genres are in the world. So thank you. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Matt, I know that you're like playing with two different meetings, but do you have any questions? Are you cool with what we taught? Was it valuable? I'm I'm good. Um, like I said, I got this other meeting with the kids' school right next to me here. So, but but thank you, Jennifer, for everything. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Mary, did I drop anything? Did I live, live, leave anything out? Gosh, I'm really stuttering today. Forgive me, guys. I must be tired. <laughs> Matt, if he has Facebook for his business. Oh, oh, you know what? We were going to change presenter and show your camera. So yeah. you can. Okay, so I'm going to make you the presenter. Okay, if you look in your control panel, on your screen you should see an icon that looks like a computer monitor click on that and you'll be able to share your screen an icon that looks like a what looks like a computer monitor so there's the microphone icon yep, and I then there's icon and then there's the computer screen icon that's the one where we are allowed to share your screen open system preferences yep oh it may not be set up automatically you may have to go through some steps to do that yeah it's not uh, doing anything no worries so let's just discuss it okay so what Mary was talking about earlier is, is that when we are doing content for DNH Enterprises or when we are doing it for Cars Second Chance, we work in Google Documents. And Google Documents are free and they are in real time. So I can be typing on the document the same exact time as Mary, the same exact time as Matt. We can all be on the same document and see what the edits are. But one of the reasons why we use Google Documents is, is that we love to be transparent and we love to make sure that everything that we're putting forth for your business is approved by you because it's your voice, it's your marketing, you want some control, right? So we, especially every month for blogs, right? It's like, okay, we've written the blog for February. Here is your blog, read through it. Let me know if there's anything that you want changed. If I don't hear from you, I will assume that that is good news and we'll just go ahead and post it on the first of the month and promote it on all your channels. 
If you do want something changed, I'm sure you'll get back to me in plenty of time so we can make those updates and then put it put it up there. And then also too, we have a similar document for the social media posts, but admittedly, not many people are going into the into that document. You know what they do? They're on Facebook, the end recipient of it, and they're like, oh, this is a great post, or hey, this is there's an issue with the post. And so that's actually kind of a good thing too. You can see what we have planned for you, but then you can also see on your social media channels, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, what did show up, and you're like, hey, they really are doing their stuff. Yep, we scheduled it for you. It's all there. It's all ready to go, launched and loaded. <laughs> it's funny, though, Jen. I I mean, you gave me a great idea tonight about uh, doing videos and the one of how to jumpstart. It, it, wouldn't it be fun to get all of your shops together and just throw out some ideas of what people are doing so we could kind of like all share or is that crazy no 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 in fact you know it's really kind of funny did you know that i'm going to be teaching my video marketing course at vision in march no yeah that, that's going to all be online too it's going to be online and so here's the cool thing i'm so honored do you know how big of a deal it is to teach at vision like this will be my third time teaching at vision i'm so honored so Huge. honored because you have to you have to go through a whole process and the board selects you and all that stuff so i taught my um seo uh, fishing for millennials seo class in 2018 and 2019 and then 2020 we went to vision right before COVID hit. So like it was the last in-person event I think any of us attended. Anyway, because I wasn't a teacher, I actually was a spectator and I went to a lot of marketing classes and all those marketing classes said, it's so important to have video marketing, but they didn't show the how to's. And you know me, I love to show people how to do it. I want to show you how you can be successful so you can just go. So, I proposed a class that I, I will be teaching at Vision, and after Vision, I'll be happy to teach it to your group, but I have to give them the the uh, the credit where credit is due. They're the first ones to receive it, right? And then I can teach it elsewhere. But um, pretty much what I do is I show you, here's how to set up your video, here's what to talk about, here's how to edit your video, and here's how to promote it on all your channels. If your folks, knew what to video wouldn't that be half of the problem solved right there and then because like there's always some young person either in your shop or in your family that is all about making those videos for you <laughs> right i have one technician uh he has this ability to mimic or imitate i mean he just does he, could, he should be a comedian, and I was thinking he would be amazing. How long should the video be, you think? Oh, that's a great question. It all depends on what is the purpose of the video format. So if it is something just really mildly entertaining, like it can be short. Like if it's funny, like, you know, a minute or less, right? Um, if it is uh, something engaging, like a, a question and answer thing, or maybe even like a customer testimonial, I would say two minutes, three minutes max um, would be that. If it is an educational thing, I'd say treat it like a TED Talk, get a lot of information in there, and cap it at 15 minutes. And okay. then there are the other formats, like um, say, for example, you were doing some big presentation uh, about an event that you were doing, like a car care clinic or maybe... Um, you know, uh, uh, an interview with people who donate cars to Car Second Chance or whatever, then that gives permission, something like an interview gives, or yeah, gives permission to be like an hour. Now, not everyone's going to join up for that and watch the entire hour, but if it is intriguing enough of a conversation, people will stick around. Another thought is you can always have a long video, but chop it up into five okay. by five bits. That yeah. makes sense. Awesome. Thank you. My pleasure. Anything for you guys. Anything for you. But yeah, I'd be happy to teach my video marketing class after March. Love it. Good night, everybody. And thanks for joining us, Matt. Thank Good night, you. Mary. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>